Hey guys, and in this video, we're finishing off Cube Volleyball with Cube Volleyball Part 3. Hey guys, and in this video, we're adding some cool features to Cube Volleyball. First, we'll add scoring to our game. Then, we'll add a winning and losing animation. And finally, we'll add a main menu system so we can play the game over and over and over and over and oh, this is gonna get me dizzy. Over and over again. Let's get started. Okay, let's start working on part three. The first thing we want to add is scoring. If you remember, we started making the scoring my block in the volleyball. So let's head over to the volleyball. Then, go to scoring. When the ball is falling on the ground, let's detect whether it's falling on the right side or the left side. To do this, we can see if the X position is less than negative 23. So in control, drag out an if then else block and place it right here and replace these three blocks right here. Then in operators, drag out a greater than block. Let's set this to negative 23. And then in motion, drag out X position. Then let's change the player or opponent score depending on which side it landed on. To this, we're gonna have to make some variables. So go to variables, Click on make a variable, type in player score, and then opponent score. Drag out change ball movement by one in here, and let's set this to opponent score. Then drag out set ball movement into here, and then let's set this to direction, and then set this to one. So basically, if it lands on our side of the screen, the opponent score will be changed by one. Then we'll have the ball head in the direction of the opponent next turn. So I'm going to duplicate this and then place it in here for the player. Let's set this to player score and let's change direction to negative one so it heads towards us if we get a point. Let's see if our code works. Click on the green flag and see if one of our players scores a point. It does. Great. And if we hit it, we can also score a point. That works perfectly. However, if we click on the green flag again, the score stays the same. We want to reset both these scores to 0, 0. So head over to the stage, and then drag out a when green flag clicked block. Then in variables, drag out set player score to 0, and then set opponent score to 0. Now when we click on the green flag, both scores will be reset to 0. Great. Now, what we can do to show the scores, we can right-click this and select a large readout and place it right here, and we can do the same for the opponent, too. However, this looks a bit weird, and I feel like we should use sprites to show the number of points that each side has earned. To do this, we can use two sprites that are made player score and opponent score. So if you click on player score and go to costumes, we'll see that we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we can have a game up to 5 points. Let's start making this by first making sure that player score is selected. Then let's deselect these two variables so they don't draw on the screen. Now, let's drag out a when green flag clicked block. Then let's go to the position negative 41 and 132, like right here. Let's also set our size to 75%. Finally, let's show the sprite. Then in control, drag out a forever block and then it looks, drag out, switch costume, two, and then five. We want to change the costume to show how many points we've earned. However, let's say that we have zero points. That means it'll show the zeroth costume, but there's no such thing as a zeroth costume. Instead, we want the first costume, which has the number zero. So instead, we'll add one to the player's score and then give it to the costume. So in operators, drag out plus. Let's set this to one, and then in variables, drag out player score. Now when we click on the green flag, we will have a very accurate counter of how many points we get. Great! Let's do the same for the opponent score, and thankfully it's just really simple. All I have to do is drag this into here and make a few adjustments. So let's head over to the opponent score, and then the first adjustment we need to make is that this needs to be 41. And then the second adjustment is this must be opponent score. So let's right click this and let's set this to opponent score. Now we have both scores in the game. Great. Next, as I showed you with the costumes, we only have numbers going up to five. So once we get five points, the game is over. How will we do this? Well, we'll have a little game over animation showing who wins, and then 
they can click anywhere to continue. So I have a special sprite for this game over, so let's click on that. And then in our costumes, we have two special costumes, player win and opponent win. Depending on who wins, this costume will be shown. Okay, let's start. In events, drag out a when green flag clicked block. Let's set the size to 100%, and right before that, we'll also hide the sprite. Then, let's wait until the player score is equivalent to 5, or the opponent score is equivalent to 5. In other words, either the player or the opponent has won. So, in control, drag out a wait until block, and then operators, drag out an and block, and two equals blocks. Then in variables, drag out player score, and opponent score. Then, set this to 5, and this to 5. First, we want to change our costume depending on whether the player is one or the opponent is one. So, in control, drag out an if-then-else statement. And then we can actually just copy-paste this into here. So, like that. Then, in looks, drag out switch costume to opponent win, and let's set this to player. And then switch costume to opponent win in else. Then, let's go to the position 0 and negative 180, so at the bottom of the screen. Let's also head over to the front layer so that it will overlap everything. And then let's show the sprite. Then let's have it slide up to the center of the screen. So in control, let's drag out repeat 10 and let's change this to nine. Then in motion, drag out change Y by right here and let's set this to 20. Once you have that done, let's reset the scores to prevent this from being triggered again. So in variables, drag out set by movement to zero, and another one here. Change this to player and opponent score. Great. Now hit the green flag and wait for either you or the opponent to win. Uh oh. Well, it doesn't seem like our game is registering. Well, here's our code. Can you figure out what bug is causing this game not to work? Well, it's waiting for the player score and the opponent score to be equivalent to 5. We just want to check whether the opponent score or the player score is equivalent to 5. So let's drag out these two blocks. And then let's change this to OR. And then place this here or right here. Anyway, let's click on the green flag and then wait for the opponent or player to reach 5 again. and then our animation pops up. Great. Notice that we can still hear the sound in the background, but don't worry, we'll fix this. Finally, let's add a menu system to our game. This allows us to play the game over and over and over. You know what, I'm not gonna go on that tangent again. But anyway, it allows us to play our game and then head over back to the menu, then we can play the game again, and we get our animation, and it looks amazing. Instead of having to click on the green flag and the red stop sign every time we want to play. To do this, we're going to have to use three events, and we're going to have to change some of the code in each sprite. But don't worry, we'll get through this. To handle the menu, we have a special sprite called Menu. So let's head over to Menu, and then let's get coding. Start by dragging on a one green flag click block from Events, and then let's set the size of this block to about 50. And then let's go to the position 4 and negative 100, right here. Then let's hide the block under Looks. And then let's broadcast a new message called main menu. Now, when I receive main menu, let's handle the menu. So when I receive message one, let's change this to main menu, and then let's show the sprite. Then let's wait until the mouse is not down. So wait until, and then not, and then mouse down. And this will make sure that when we're on this screen, the opponent wins or the player wins, that if we click right on the menu button, that the game does not immediately jump to the game. It'll wait for us to click, and then we can click on the start button. Next, let's loop until the button gets clicked. So let's head over to the forever loop. And then if then, else block. And then touching mouse pointer as our condition. Now for touching the mouse pointer, let's have it increase in size as like a natural effect for when we hover over a button. So I'm going to go to looks, and I'm going to set the size to 75%. 
And then if mouse is down, let's broadcast the start game message. So we basically start the game. So I'm going to go to control and drag out an if then else block. And then the condition is mouse down. And then broadcast start game. So broadcast message one. And let's change this to start game. But if we're not touching the mouse, then let's just set our size to the normal size, which is 50. So set size to 100%. Let's set this to 50. Now, if we click on the green flag right now, we'll see two different things. We have a start button right here and we have our game. But don't worry, we'll fix all of this and sooner or later, it will not be glitchy like this. So, but if you click start right now, nothing really happens. I mean, you can hover over start and that looks kind of cool, but we need to actually start the game. So let's click the stop button. And then when I receive start game for the menu sprite, and then let's hide the sprite. And then let's stop this code from running. So basically, we're going to drag out a stop all block. But we don't want to stop all the code forever. We just want to stop other scripts in this sprite. So let's set other scripts in this sprite. Now if we click on the green flag and click the start button, it'll disappear. And it broadcasts start game. Now that we have that code, let's start by changing all the other sprites code to react to start game. And when the game is over, it calls back to main menu. There's also one more announcement and it is game over, but we will make that once we get to it. So let's start with the player. So for our player, let's remove the when green flag clicked block and then events. Let's drag out when I receive the menu and attach it back onto there. Let's set this to start game. Then when I receive the message game over, and we're gonna have to make this new message. Then let's stop other scripts in the sprite. And then when I receive main menu, let's stop other scripts in the sprite. And we also want to hide the sprite. So when game over is called, we still want it to show because we're going to have that animation go over and we don't want all the sprites to disappear. But when main menu is called, then we can hide the sprite. Next, let's do the volleyball. So as usual, let's drag out one green flag clicked and replace it. And then in events, let's attach start game onto our script. And then when I receive main menu, we will stop other scripts in this sprite and then hide. And then when I receive game over, we will just stop other scripts in this sprite. We can duplicate this and then remove hide. Next, we have the opponent. So we can remove the green flag clicked block again. And then when I receive game over, let's change this to start game. Basically, we want all these four sprites to appear when we start the game. And then this is basically the same code as the player in volleyball. So we can actually just drag and drop these two scripts from volleyball into the opponent. And then it's going to be look layered. So I'm just going to replace them like this. Now it's time for the net. Let's drag out a when green flag click block. And then we don't actually have this yet, but we want to go to the position zero, zero. And we also want to hide it for when the game immediately starts. Now, when I receive main menu, we also want to hide it too. So it doesn't show in the menu, but we can show it when start game is called. So let's just duplicate this. We can drag this out and change this to show. And then let's change this to start game. We've already done the menu, so let's go on to the backdrop now. So let's start by deattaching the green flag click block, and then in events, let's drag out when I receive game over, and then let's set this to start game, and then in looks, let's also switch the backdrop to game. Because you actually have two specific backdrops, one for the game and one for the menu. Then let's duplicate this, and then drag these two blocks out, and when I receive main menu, we want to show the menu backdrop. Okay. We only have three more sprites to go, and two of them are almost the same thing, player score and opponent score, so bear with me, we're almost done. First off, let's remove these blocks, then let's hide the sprite when the game starts. Then, in events, let's drag out when I receive game over, and let's change this to start game. And let's drag this right here. Now when I receive main menu, let's hide the sprite, and stop other scripts in this sprite. And then almost the same thing for game over. Let's duplicate this, change this to game over, and then drag this right here, and then remove this block. 
Now let's do the opponent's code. We can drag these two sets of code into the opponent, first off. Then we just have to do the other two pieces of code from scratch. So let's click on opponent and drag these two blocks right here. And then as usual, drag this block out. Let's change this to hide. And then when I receive start game. Finally, we have game over. So let's start by dragging this block out, remove one green flag clicked, and when I receive game over, and let's change this to start game. And then also we want to stop other scripts in this spray at the beginning of the code to stop other scripts from running. And then at the end of this code, let's see if we're touching the mouse pointer and the mouse is down, and then we can go on to the main menu. So in control, drag out wait until, and then an and block, and then in sensing, drag out touching mouse pointer and mouse down. And then in events, drag out broadcast and let's set this to main menu. Also, let's broadcast game over right after we tech the game is over, so right here. And then drag out one green flag clicked and let's hide the sprite and set it size to 100%. And then when I receive main menu, let's hide the sprite and then stop other scripts in this sprite. Now we've added a main menu system to our game. If we click on the green flag, we should have a functioning main menu system. So we can click on start, and then we have a fun game that we can play against our computer. And then when a player wins, we can click anywhere to continue. And then we can start the game all over again. Great! Well guys, we have officially finished Cube Volleyball, all three parts. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Now, there's a lot of things you can do to make your game even better. You can adjust it to have more features. Like, you can also, like, change the players, like, to cats or something. If you remix this project, let me know in the comments below. And again, big thanks for all of you who've watched the tutorial. If you like learning how to make your own video games, hit that subscribe button. Watch out for my next video. Be there or be MC squared. See ya.